We continue the second half of our good news program in which you will hear a new hilarious satire if men gave showers for grooms as women do for brides. And now Maxwell House presents Robert Taylor and Rita Johnson in Rendezvous by George Beck. Time, April 1918, a few minutes before 4 o'clock in the morning. The scenes are front-line trench on the Western Front. An American company is about to go over the top for the first time. The captain in command has just issued final instructions to his men. One young man, Private Arthur Parks, played by Robert Taylor, is hysterical from fatigue and strain. He's about to go to pieces. I can't do it, Captain. You've got to do it, son. Exactly one minute your company's going over the top. And you've got to be with us. Now buck up. 45 seconds to go. I won't do it, I tell you. I won't do it. Yes, you will. All right. If I'm going over the top, I'm going now. Parks, wait for the signal. Wait. Parks. Oh, the poor kid. They got it. The signal, man. Let's go. Believe me, this is my first time. I've never been under fire. It's not right. I'm bleeding. I'm hit. Well, Arthur. Who are you? Don't you know me? No. Where'd you come from? Out there. Out there? No man's land? Mm Mm-hmm. You're a nurse. No, not exactly. Though some call me merciful. I tried, but I... I lost my head. Now I'll get the devil from Captain Morrow. No, you won't. Don't worry about it. You did very well. Very well indeed. He understands. Now. What do you mean? How do you know? I've just come from him. He was worried about you. You went over too soon and got hit, and it worried him. He looked back where you'd fallen. The poor man, he shouldn't have looked back. Such a pity. He's dead. Yes. So many are dead. So very many. I couldn't help it. It's not my fault. Of course it isn't. I'm sorry you worried about me, but it isn't my fault. I was never trained for this. I was always frightened of getting hurt, dying. You aren't really afraid. Yes, I am, I tell you. Of me? You? No, certainly I'm not afraid of you. Well, that's better. Why should I be afraid of you? No reason at all. Yet so many are. Afraid of you? Yes, and they needn't be, really. Am I so frightening? No. You're quite pretty. I can't see you very clearly, but... Sound like you're beautiful. (laughs) That's gallant of you, Arthur. No, not at all. Now that I look at you closer, you're really lovely. Thank you, Arthur. You're very nice yourself. It isn't often young people like you think I'm nice, much less lovely. Mostly it's only old people. Tired old people. That's funny. Here I am talking to you as if we were old friends. I don't even know who you are. I've known you a long time. Your name is Arthur Parks, isn't it? Yes. Skippy Parks. Say, you must know me from way back. It's years since the kids called me Skippy. I'd almost forgotten it. You were such a nice little boy. (laughs) Don't you remember how terribly sick you were the time you had pneumonia? When they had to put you in an oxygen tent? Yes, but only vaguely. I was there then. Right beside your bed. Were you? I don't remember seeing you at all. I was there just the same. And the time you went skating when your mother warned you not to, and the ice broke. Oh, yes. It took a pole motor to bring me around. I was there then. You were. <laughs> Look, miss, I... I'm all mixed up. I'm wounded, and I've got a funny feeling, sort of dreaming like But I, I know I'm not dreaming, not really. I know you're here beside me, and still it's all so odd. Me talking to you, a woman, in a place like this. It's not so odd. 
who ever heard of a soldier having a quiet conversation with a woman on a battlefield? It doesn't make sense. No, it never does. You're so calm about it. I'm a soldier and so afraid. The easy way you take it, you'd think killing was an everyday occurrence with you. Sometimes it gets so bad, even I can't see it. Yeah. That's more like how I'd expect a woman to talk. Well, that's what I can't stand, the awful noise. You see, I'm a musician. I'm very sensitive to sounds. It's all right for the officers. War is their business. They studied it all about it, just as I studied music. Look at my hands. They're all calloused and cracked. I'll never play again. And the whole thing's so ridiculous. Such a waste. Because I'm not even a good soldier. I wouldn't say that. It's even my fault that Captain Morrow's dead. He was a good soldier. I should never have come here in the first place. Didn't you know what it was going to be like? I don't know. I thought, kind of a glorious adventure. You know, the uniforms and the flags and the bands. I never liked brassy marches, but somehow when I saw Bill Heron and Johnny Cruz in uniform marching along, it kind of got inside of me. And you joined up? Yeah. I was drafted. But I, I wanted to enlist. I wanted to very badly the day we got the news that Johnny and Bill were dead, killed in action. That made me crazy mad. Only Lorna, that's Johnny's sister, we were engaged. She wouldn't let me enlist. She carried on something awful and made me promise I wouldn't. She was right. Yeah. Lorna's always right. She's so wise. But it was a terrible time for me just the same. You know, people with brothers in the trenches giving me funny looks. I could have spared myself all that by enlisting. Since they got me in the first draft anyway. The shells, the shells are coming closer. We better get out of here. You needn't be afraid. Come. Where to? There are so many wounded, so many dying. I've got to go to them. No, you'd better stay right here. It's safer. Oh, Arthur. You still don't understand. Look at me. Closer. Closer. Into my eyes. Oh. Look again, Arthur. Oh. You're... You're dead. Yes, my dear. I'm dead. No, don't shrink away from me. Don't spoil everything by being frightened. Go away. Go away. Let me alone. I can't this time, Arthur. You must come with me. No, no, I won't. I don't want to. If you don't go away, I'll... No, don't touch me now. It's time, boy. I'm sorry. I... I... That's all right. You're not frightened anymore, are you? No. I'm sort of glad. No. Pain so bad. What about Lorna? She'll be all right after a while. How do I go with you? Just take my hand. Quickly. Quickly. Oh, can I write a letter? Just a short one? I'm sorry, Arthur. I can't wait. Well, couldn't you... Uh, come back for me a little later? I wouldn't go away. So many things I've just thought of to do. I... She's got a wonderful idea for a, for a symphony. I can hear it just as plain. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. If you could only hear it. Just give me a few minutes to get it down on paper. It's lovely, I dare say, but I can't. Oh, you've just got to. It's such a lovely string. Please. You always do get around me, don't you? But not too long, mind. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. I'll be here waiting when you come back for me. No, I won't be back here for you. I'll pick you up on the road to Vimy in five minutes. I'll meet you in an ambulance. Au revoir. Till then, On the road to Vimy. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Oh, Lorna. Uh. <laughs>